order. Members of the bar, members of the bench, your honors, good day. Article 14 of the revised penal code. Aggravating circumstances. As the name suggests, it serves to increase the penalty fixed by law. Paragraph 1. That the advantage be taken by the offender of his public position. This is applicable only to a public officer who shall ad take advantage of his public position. He uses influence, prestige, or ascendancy. However, when a public officer commits a common crime, independent of his official functions, he will be punished as a private individual. Moreover, it is not aggravating when it is an integral element of or an inherent offense. For example, a police officer disarmed the victim before shooting him. Here, there is abuse of public position, being member of the PNP. Paragraph 11, that the crime be committed in consideration of a price, reward, or promise. The basis here is by the motivating power itself. Price, reward, or promise must be for the purpose of inducing another to perform the deed. Here, there are two or more principles, the one who gives and the one who accepts it, both of whom are principles. For example, Farhan induces close friend Abdullah to kill his barrio enemy, Mohammed, in exchange for his daughter's marriage. Abdullah, following the instruction of Farhan, succeeded in marrying his daughter. In this example, inducement by promise is committed. Paragraph 14, that craft, fraud, or disguise be employed. Craft involves intellectual trickery and cunning on the part of the accused, whereas fraud are insidious words or machinations used to induce the victim. While lastly, these guys, you are resorting to any device to conceal your identity. For example, when the accused dress as police uniform to extort money from a foreigner in a casino, this constitutes disguise for the accused, concealing his identity to commit a crime. Paragraph 18. That the crime be committed after an unlawful entry. There is an unlawful entry when the entrance is effected by a way not intended for the purpose. For example, when one entered through the window of a house in order to kill the owner inside, this constitutes unlawful entry because it is not proper place for entrance into the house. Paragraph 20, that the crime be committed with the aid of persons under 15 years of age or by means of motor vehicles, airships, or other similar means. Minors are usually used in committing a crime because they are easy to persuade and may even evade imprisonment, while motor vehicles are used to efficiently execute a crime. Example, Pedro caused a 14 years old boy to enter a certain house and to take all valuable things, cell phones, money that he can find while Pedro will be waiting outside to get all the things the boy will be able to get. Here, the crime was committed with the aid of a person under 15 years of age and should be taken account in, against Pedro. Another example, what if the robber was able to obtain a motor vehicle nearby in order to escape the crime scene? Will paragraph 20 of Article 14 be appreciated? The answer would be no, because it must be used only as a means to commit a crime. Mitigating 
as the name suggests, it serves to lessen the penalty fixed by law. Paragraph 2, that the offender is under 18 years of age or over 70 years. In the case of minor, he shall be proceeded against in accordance with the provision of Article 18. This provision is, big, is already repealed by justice, by Juvenile Justice and Welfare Act of 2006. If the offender is 15 or over but under 18 years of age, such offender may be exempt from criminal liability and provided he or she acted without discernment. On the other hand, if such offender acted with discernment, such child shall undergo diversion programs. Diversion programs, instead of formal court proceedings, the child will undergo DSWD program. For example, about 9 o'clock in the evening, in the municipality of Puerto Galera, Arnold, who is 17 years of age, armed with knife, inflict two wounds in different parts of the body of Garcia, who died instantaneously. The Supreme Court found that the accused acted without discernment during the commission of the crime, thus placing him under the custody of the DSWD. Paragraph 7, that the offender had voluntarily surrendered himself to a person in authority or his agent or that he had voluntarily confessed his guilt before the court prior to the presentation of evidence for the prosecution. Number one, voluntary surrender. Number two, plea of guilty. Two thoughts under one paragraph. Requisite of voluntary surrender, there are three. Number one, the offender had not actually been arrested. Number two, offender surrender himself to, to a person in authority. And lastly, that the surrender was voluntary. Example, surrender of weapons. Yes or no? Will this paragraph be appreciated? The answer would be no. It cannot be equated with voluntary surrender. You must also surrender yourself and admitting completely your crime to the authority in order for this mitigating circumstance be appreciated. Now, moving on, requisites of plea of guilty. There are also three. Number one, that the offender spontaneously confess his guilt. Second, the confession of guilt was made in open court. And lastly, the confession of guilt was made prior to the presentation of evidence for the prosecution. Example, during the arraignment, the accused pleaded not guilty, but withdraws it and thereafter pleads guilty before the presentation of evidence by the prosecutor. Paragraph 8, that the offender is deaf and dumb, blind or otherwise suffering some physical defects which thus restricts his means of action, defense, or communication with his fellow beings. As a general rule, physical defect must restrict means of action, defense, or communication with fellow beings. Example, one is a deaf mute but able to graduate political science. Thus, mitigating circumstance is appreciated? Considering his educational background? The answer would be yes, because this paragraph does not distinguish between educated and uneducated deaf mute or blind persons. The code consider them as being on an equal footing. Moving on, on our next topic, I'm going to discuss to you the computation of period. With that, thank you.